Hi, my name is Art Knowles. I'm a retired Marine, uh, and I flew Harriers in the Marine Corps, and I'm right in front of my own privately owned Harrier, which is the only one in the entire world. And who's making all that noise on the runway? That's Art Knowles and the Harrier, the Sea Harrier known as Char. We've been flying on the air show circuit now for nine seasons. This is our ninth successful air show season, and we're well up over 240 flights in this airplane. I want the spectators to see the unique capabilities of this airplane. First of all, it's a very rare airplane. They only built 76 of them to begin with. The Sea Harrier FA-2 model had a radar in the front, carried air-to-air -air missiles, and had uh, 30 millimeter twin 30 millimeter Aiden cannon underneath of it. This is a frontline fighter and up till just recently the Indian Navy was actually still flying them as a fighter. The Brits surplused it in 2006. They sold it. Uh, they, they intended for it to go to a museum or something like that but we were able to purchase it, import it, get it certified by the FAA, get it inspected and with a team of volunteers we put uh, managed to work a couple of uh, years to put this thing together. We checked all the landing gear up and cycles up and down. We checked all the hydraulic flight controls, moving them back and forth and make sure everything was, was going properly. And then we had to do the electrical system to make sure the generators were generated and properly serviced with a special fluid. Uh, we had to invent or reverse engineer some of the servicing equipment because there's a liquid shock absorber on that nose that uses a, a special silicone. And we had to get some silicone engineers to take a look at it and get this, the right viscosity but we also had to make a servicing fitting so that we could pump that silicone in at 2,000 plus or minus 50 PSI. In a previous life when the aircraft was a fighter, there would have been a air-to-air -air radar up in this nose. Right now, we've got 66 pounds of lead up there to keep the center of gravity right. These tubes are called pedostatic tubes, and they, they uh, measure the airspeed coming in the tube versus the pressure off the side of the tube, and that's what gives us our airspeed indication inside the cockpit. We consider flying speed in this airplane 160 knots, which is about 180 miles an hour. It's really not flying until you've got that much wind coming over the wing. This airplane can also can be, go very high speed. My high speed pass today, I hit over 500 knots. That's not unusual, I'm not even using full power. It will go 650 knots, which is about 740 miles an hour. You can see from the front of the airplane, the wings are very small. It's only a 26 foot wingspan. Look at the wing in comparison to the horizontal tail. Horizontal tail is over 13 feet wide, uh, but the wings are 26. We're at the back end of the airplane here now. You can see the main gear and you can see we have a speed brake, which actually uh, we don't use very often. The nozzles are a much more effective way of stopping the airplane flight. Just rotate the nozzles down the airplane, we'll lose 100 knots almost instantly. But the speed brake does add stability, directional stability. You can see we've got a, a very big vertical fin and we've got a ventral fin, which also helps to stabilize the airplane. And the tail is an all-moving tail. The whole, this whole slab moves uh, in order to give us as much pitch authority as possible. We had to make um, a hydraulic generator so we could get 3,000 PSI on, on two hydraulic systems so we could, we could work the landing gear and we could work the flight controls. Two of the most important switches in the cockpit are the water switch. The airplane uses water injection into the engine, especially in the hover mode. I move it up and I would that would be a takeoff position where it uh, begins water flow based on engine RPM or I can go to the land position which initiates water flow based on my engine temperature. I've also got a manual water and I want to make sure that before I start that both of those switches are off otherwise it throws a little extra gas into the engine and I will get a hot start. I have here a duct pressure gauge which lets me know if those reaction controls that we have in the nose, the tail and the wingtips are properly pressurized. They have to, it's, it's very hot high pressure air so it has to be zero when I'm flying around as a conventional airplane, but when I lower the nozzles down, this gauge will come up, and I have to have that pressure, otherwise I have no reaction controls once I get into the hover. This is a bomb release button. Obviously, we don't have any bombs on here. We can't release that. And we have a trigger, and you can see that it pops up a little bit. Um, it has, they both have 
red and orange on them so I can look down and see whether I've got my switches armed or not. Now that now I've got a trigger that would fire the 30 millimeter cannon, but again, we don't have that installed. We will eventually use that button for uh, a smoke system. We want to put a smoke system on the airplane. That's down the line. These are um, radar associated buttons and uh, for designating and uh, slowing, slowing the radar, and we don't use any of those because uh, we don't have the radar in here. Okie dokie, we've fooled around with this flying stuff long enough. There's one thing that the Harrier could do that no other airplane can do. The whole family of Harriers, the various families of Harriers, have the ability to fly like a conventional jet, but, but when it comes to landing, they can stop in midair, they can actually go backwards, they can hover, they can turn around, and they can land in a very short space. What gives us the ability to stop and, and, and uh, go backwards in the air are these four rotatable nozzles. The, the fan air is exhausted off of the front nozzles here, called the cold nozzles, and the rear, this, this would be hot uh, exhaust gas, normal jet exhaust gas. This comes out of the back. There's two nozzles on each side, and they're all controlled from inside the cockpit by a lever on my left hand right next to the throttle. And this is the throttle quadrant, and it's got a throttle, and it's got a nozzle lever. And the nozzle, the throttle obviously controls the engine, and on that I have a speed brake, and it's got a preset slow stop, short takeoff stop, where I would set this for a desired nozzle angle, say 60 is the most common, and I would set it right there so that when I accelerate to my predetermined airspeed, I would take my hand, I would go full throttle, take my hand from the throttle to the nozzle lever, pull this nozzle lever back, and then the nozzles would go to 60 degrees. There's two more stops here. One is called the hover stop, where if I pull the nozzle straight down and uh, it hits this stop, and then the nozzles would be vertical, and I can lift it up and go back even further, and it would reverse the nozzles forward. That's called the braking stop, where the nozzles are actually pointing forward. You can see by this protractor here, I can rotate the nozzles all the way from straight aft, which makes the airplane fly pretty much like a conventional jet, down to various nozzle angles to the vertical takeoff would be somewhere around here 81, 81 and a half degrees. That, I, I would put the nozzles down to what's called the hover stop they, uh, with the thrust pointing straight down. Uh, obviously straight down is 90 degrees, but the airplane sets at about eight and a half degrees nose up. So that's what's 81 and a half degrees. And that would allow the airplane, if I'm flying, I would come to, I would slowly decelerate and come to a stop. And if I were on the ground and put them, put them straight down and then added uh, full throttle, the airplane would lift up straight. The limit for the center, the center of gravity for hovering obviously has to be between these two nozzles. And that's for hovering and then for normal flight. Uh, and the, the limit is 95 one hundredths of an inch, this much between the full forward CG and the full aft CG, which is why we had to put 66 pounds of lead up in the nose. It's actually about 11 and a half inches past this datum point here. So here's where the CG is, the center of gravity. And in many respects, this airplane is the same as a lot of other airplanes. It's a metal fuselage, it's not composite. It's a jet engine, which basically is pretty simple. This is the heart of the Harrier. From right about here to the back of that nozzle there is the Pegasus engine, the Rolls-Royce Pegasus engine. Uh, this engine is unique because the, the low pressure stage rotates in one direction and the high pressure stage rotates in the opposite direction to minimize the gyroscopic effects while you're in the hover. That is critical to being able to control this airplane in the hover. If they both rotate the same way, the gyroscopic effects could possibly overcome the flight controls. This is a Mark 104 engine. On the test cell, it produced 21,600 pounds of thrust. The airplane, as you see it here, weighs about 15,000 pounds. It has civilian avionics. It doesn't have a military weapon system in it. Civilian radio, civilian IFF, civilian GPS, two hydraulic systems, and an electrical system. So if you boil all that down, it's really not a complicated airplane, as some people would think. Conventional brakes, conventional steering on the airplane, for a nose wheel steering actually, so it's not, it's, it's not like a regular airplane. With the nose wheel steering active, um, it, gives very, it gets both fine and coarse steering. As the speed gets real high, it, it transitions to a coarse nose wheel steering, but when you slow speed, it's called a fine nose wheel steering. This is trim nose down, nose up, right wing down, left wing down. There's another paddle switch over here 
for nose wheel steering, and there's two ways I can do it. I have a switch over here, or I can have hot nose wheel steering for shipboard operations, or I can just press this paddle with my finger, and the rudders will move the nose wheel. The Harrier is burning down fuel very fast, and it also flies from a, a wide speed range, so you're constantly trimming so that you've got zero stick forces, or as close as possible, so that you, if you take your hand off the stick, the airplane will continue to fly a little bit, allows you to re-enter stuff to the uh, uh, GPS. We have very light landing gear on the wingtips to save weight. The majority of the thrust of the, uh, the, the, of the force of landing is absorbed by this main landing gear, which has a very big shock absorber on it. But because the, the two tires are so close together, there's no differential braking. So you've got to have nose wheel steering in order to fly. So it's, it's just a basic type of airplane that can stop in the middle of the air and, and land vertically. He's going to try to do a four-point roll, stopping precisely at each of the four points. There is one, there is two, there is three, and then he goes sideways. Well, he's not going to do that this time, apparently. He's having too much fun, I think. This airplane would be impossible to fly without the continued and dedicated support and passion of the ground crew, the other pilots that are helping us, and my wife. These guys mostly have military experience, but they've been working on airplanes for years and years and years. We're able to inspect it and keep this airplane in good flying shape. Ladies and gentlemen of Syracuse, Art Knowles and Char, the Sea Harrier.